The fourth China Central Asia Foreign Ministers meeting has wrapped up in the city of Xi'an. Foreign ministers from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and China reached consensus on the need to safeguard regional peace and stability and deepen cooperation in multiple fields. More importantly, they agreed to pave the way for the upcoming China Central Asia summit, during which a China Central Asia heads of state meeting mechanism will be established. Following the chaotic withdrawal of the United States from the Afghanistan and the ongoing crisis in Ukraine, Central Asia has become a crucial region for energy and transport. As the West lags behind in economic and strategic engagement in the region, what role can China play and how could China's involvement influence the region and the world beyond? To start with, the meeting in Xi'an was announced in 2022 to coincide with the 30th anniversary of diplomatic relations established between China and those five nations. However, China's historic trade and cultural links with the region date back to the ancient Silk Road. Central Asia is strategically important to China because of energy transport and the fight against what we know as the three evil forces, terrorism, extremism and separatism. In 2010, China surpassed the European Union to become Central Asia's biggest trading partner. China's strategic focus turned to Central Asia as a march west two years later in response to the United States' pivotal to Asia under the Obama administration. During the meeting in Xi'an, China's state councillor and foreign minister Qin Gang said that China will always support Central Asian countries in upholding national sovereignty, independence, security and territorial integrity and the development path they independently choose in light of their national conditions. By comparison, Central Asia's strategic significance has long been underestimated by the West, which only recently started to scramble for more access to the region. Western governments and organizations have adopted a Washington consensus type approach that creates a mismatch with the priorities of Central Asian countries, focusing on democratization and liberal economic reforms as pillars of engagement in the region, while Central Asian governments prioritize stability and development. There's also China's Belt and Road Initiative, a multi-billion dollar infrastructure and connectivity project, followed by multifaceted cooperation in infrastructure, new energy, digitization, trade and counterterrorism. Multilaterally, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, a Euro-Asian political, economic and security organization established in 2001, has achieved a progress in upholding regional stability, which is what Central Asian countries need the most. As Qin Gang said, China and the Central Asian countries are good neighbors. Cooperation has brought benefits to all and can help build a community with a shared future.